Hello. Hello, hello, James. Hi. Thank you. you. Yeah, not too bad. Thank you. You're good. Yeah, as I said in that message, I apologise. My um, my phone completely died on uh, on Wednesday evening. So um, oh, that's okay. So uh, yeah, apologies for that. Well, I'm sorry to hear about that. Hope hope you got it fixed or. Oh yeah, no, no, it's it's fine. Yeah, no, no, it was it was, it was the battery. It was just um, yeah. I thought okay. I hadn't um hadn't got it charged. I normally charge it overnight, but I didn't the night before. You mm -hmm. see, so I got caught by it. So um, yeah. So how are things? I think um, we were. I think we were just finishing off at the time of conversation about. I think you were asking about the Freemason uh, link to, uh, with. Um, but um, I think all I can, all I can say to you till now is um, is that we you know we we do have no no link with Freemasons and that's you know speaking as a an elder in the congregation and um, you know there's 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 no link you know ones may try to find a link and, and believe there is but um, we 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 don't uh, yeah we don't associate ourselves with with Freemasons. Um, well, I won't go back to that topic. Would you wish to? deal with a, a chapter in your book enjoy life forever yeah. i yes yeah, so, i, I yeah, did write you, away for a paper copy oh right no, okay yeah yes so you, I, I assumed you were using an online copy so i don't know okay so you've got a paper copy um yeah so um i think we're going to focus um on the resurrection of jesus you were asking about all resurrect him being resurrected as a spirit and that you said was a surprise when you read that um so would, think, would you like me to read paragraph three on page 63 to get the context yeah if you'd like to, to do that yeah lesson it was lesson 15 was that yes right? lesson 15 paragraph three where is jesus now on page 63 and it says after jesus's life as a human ended he was resurrected as a spirit and he returned to heaven there god exalted him to a superior position now Jesus has a position of great authority, second only to Jehovah himself. It's the statement that he was resurrected as a spirit that I find incredibly difficult. Um, you see, the tomb was empty. Yeah. And was... we read that Jesus' body did not see corruption in Acts 2.31, which I'll read. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ that his body was not left in Hades, nor did his soul see corruption. Yes. So, I his, think that would... so his, his flesh didn't see corruption. The, the angel rolled back the stone from the entrance to the tomb, sh surely so that he could um, walk out of the tomb in the same body that he died in. That, that, that's why the tomb was empty. Um, when Lazarus was laid, raised from the dead, uh, and Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, um, the stone was rolled back. Uh, John eleven thirty eight and to forty. Then Jesus again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone laid against it. Jesus said, "Take away the stone." Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Um, and then Jesus raised him from the dead. But the stone was rolled back, surely because Lazarus was resurrected in the same body that he died in, and he walked out of the tomb. Wouldn't the same situation be applicable to Jesus? Well, a question to think about is... What was the difference between the destination of Lazarus and the destination of Jesus? Where, where, where was where was Jesus to be be raised up to? What was his destination? Well, he was he was to be resurrected on this earth. His body was to come to life again on this earth, and he appeared to people for forty days on this earth in the same body that he died in. That's why the body bore the marks of crucifixion. He showed people his hands and his feet, because his hands and his feet surely bore the marks of crucifixion. Why would he keep showing his hands and his feet to people? Well, you're right. He appeared to. He made a number of appearances after his death. Yes. 
Um, but if we look at if you look at First Peter three eighteen, got that whatever Bible you, you can I read yourself. it? Yeah, sure, sure, that'd be great. Yeah. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit brought Jesus back to life. Yes, it, it, in, interesting that word, um, word is slightly different. Is that the King James Bible? Uh, the New King James. New King James, yeah. Yeah, so it's, um, there's a number of other references we've got. So in our... In our um, modern um, translation that we use the new world translation we, we see it says he was put to death in the flesh but made alive in the spirit and that's also similar to um other translations such as the kingdom interlinear and the american standard version um, but, where they also say but made alive in the spirit because it's a dative but it doesn't say he's made alive as a spirit. That that's what you're reading into the text. You're isogeting the word he's made alive as a spirit in the text. And the text just doesn't say that. In flesh yeah. and in spirit is a contrast between flesh and spirit. It doesn't say he's raised as a spirit. No Bible says that. Yeah, and let, let's 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 use it let's use this together with some other scriptures. So for instance, what do we know um if we look at um Where's the? I think it is at Acts. Um, find it. So in Acts. In fact, it might be this, this scripture you were referring to. Now, Acts thirteen thirty four. Was that one you? Acts thirteen thirty four. I'll read. I'll read what we have here in our New World Translation. The fact that this this was the. Um, the Apostle Paul speaking here about well, Jesus. You, you, you need to read from verse 30, 33, really, to, to get the context. If you'd, Yeah, we can, we can read verse 33. So here, um, God has completely fulfilled it to us, their children, by resurrecting Jesus. Just as it is written in the second psalm, You are my son, today I have become your father. And then... Paul goes on saying the fact that he resurrected him, Jesus, from the dead, never again to return to corruption. Um, in fact, that's probably as far as we need to go there. So um, what does your translation say for there for verse 34? Excuse me, let's let's read on. Let's let's read the whole verse okay, yeah, you, and read on to verse 35 yeah. to get the context. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it, it's, it, it is stated in this way. I will give you the expressions of loyal love promised to David, which are faithful. Um, and then it goes on to talk about, uh, well, another psalm. So it also says in another psalm, you will not allow your loyal one to see corruption. So um, we've got this word corruption being used. Is that is that the same, um, in fact, the King James translation? Um, it actually says the same, doesn't it? Now, no more to return to corruption. Verse thirty-four. Um, so, what do we, what do we, what do we know? Um, when we think of the body, this here is is re, 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 yeah, refer with reference to um, the body. Um, if we look at um, the human body. Even if it's even if it's perfect, it's still it still could be subject to, to decay and ruin, uh, as you know we're used to um, with with human bodies. So, with Jesus here, we're being told that he was never to be returned to return to corruption. So, he, so if he was resurrected to his human body, he would therefore be being raised to corruption which seems to go against what what we're being told here from the, so from the just scriptures. just just make that say that again so if jesus was resurrected back to his human body then he would have been returning to corruption no because jesus was born without sin his body was not corrupted it, it, it makes it very clear um, 
it is the same word for corruption. I've just looked it up in an interlinear. It's let me just get the name of the interlinear. It's um, interlinear Greek lexicon by George Rickerberry, and it's it's uh, tied to Strong's Concordance, and it's the same Greek word for for corruption in both verses. Acts two thirty one. The numbering is. Uh, oh gosh, dear we, dear me, where are we? I found it. It's thirteen twelve, and I won't embarrass myself by That's trying 13, to pronounce 13. the word. I think it's got a rough breathing at the start of it, so. <laughs> Yeah, it begins with the H sound. I think I think that's a rough breathing. My I need new glasses, reader glasses, to be able to look at the small print carefully. Um, yeah. Jesus's body did not corrupt, but it, but a, a human body is subject to corruption. Not one without sin. Jesus's it's, body had no sin, so it would not be subject to corruption. So that definition that you used that the, the word there with the, so the, the greek word what did you say that was um it, the number is 1312 it's quite a long complicated greek word uh and it's also in verse 30 well you read it in acts 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 thirteen thirty four. i think it was uh yeah, acts thirteen thirty four. we've got let me just, um... So the text is simply saying that his body did not corrupt. Now, why was the tomb empty, James? Why did he continually show his hands and his feet to his disciples post-resurrection? Surely because he had risen from the grave in the same body that he died in. That's why the stone was rolled back from the tomb by the angel just as when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead in the passage I read in John 11, Jesus said, roll the stone back from the tomb so that Lazarus obviously could walk out of the tomb in the same body that was dead. Uh -huh. um, well, let's, let's, I suppose what we could do is think about these accounts that uh, where Jesus um, appeared to one. Now, obviously, he needed to appear to ones to help them believe that he'd been res resurrected. Resurrected. Now, you, I can understand, you know, the thinking as to, okay, so he must have been, his body must have been used uh, in that case. Um, but let's let's think of one of those occasions, um, and we would we could look at um, when he appeared to Thomas. So you need to read the verse. Is this John 20, 20, 27? John 20, 27. Right. Let, let, let's read the verse because I... Uh, would we agree not to paraphrase the Bible? If we're going to discuss scripture, let's actually read it. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. I, I would say, let, if, should we read... If you want 27, should we read 24 to 28, that whole Go on. portion? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you, shall I read it, or do you? Want to... Oh, you you read it. That's fine. I, I'll, I'll read it from yeah. I'll read it from my translation I'm using. So it says, "But Thomas, one of the twelve, who was called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were telling him, we have seen the Lord.' But he said to them, "Unless I see in his hands the, the print of the nails, and stick." my finger into the print of the nails and stick my hand into his side I will never believe it well eight days later his disciples were again indoors and Thomas was with them Jesus came although the doors were locked and he stood in the midst and said may you have peace next he said to Thomas put your finger here and see my hands and take your hand and stick it into my side and stop doubting but believe. In answer, Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, have you believed? Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. So this this is this uh, account that you've referred to where Jesus is clearly in, in a state where his body was uh, as if he'd been 
um, you know, he'd been tortured, gone through that um, that account of, as you say, crucifixion. But his death, he'd gone through the death, and you'd expect his body to have um, some marks left from, you know, and his treatment before his death as well. So the interesting point in this section of scripture though, is verse 26. How did Jesus get what was the what was the situation with this room, Robert? Well, it this says room. that Jesus suddenly appeared in the room, even though the door doors doors were locked. Um, Jesus, remember, had risen up in a glorified human body. I, I think it's quite possible that if Jesus can raise people from the dead, such as he, he raised Lazarus from the dead, he could do something miraculous, such as a, appear in a room. Um, if, you know, if he's able to raise people from the dead, he's quite able to, to appear within a room miraculously. Um, okay, but remember, this, this actually might not even be a miracle because he's in a glorified human body. Who knows how that glorified human body is able to act or what it can do? You so know, to us it might. Yeah, go on, sorry, yes, to uh, to us it might seem rather like um, a Superman body. You know, who knows what uh, amazing attributes a glorified human body can do? The main thing is in verse twenty-seven, he says to Thomas, "Reach your finger here and look at my hands, and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing." Jesus had risen up. Yes, it was a glorified human body. Um, so it is slightly different to the one that he walked the earth in. It's the same body, but it's now glorified. He He's appearing in the same body that died on the tree because his body bears the marks of crucifixion. The only difference is it's now a glorified human body. But it's the same body. That's why it bore the marks of crucifixion. Why is Jesus telling Thomas to put his finger into his hands and into his side? Why would Jesus I, mention such a crazy well, thing if this well, isn't the same body that died on the tree? Well, what do we know uh, if we, we've we, during his time on earth before his resurrection? I don't. Can you recall at the time when he just suddenly materialised, or you know, or, um, appear, that was able to appear in any room anywhere? This, this, this. Account, Sorry, say, say that again. I'm, I'm trying to follow you. Do, do you recall a time during his ministry on on earth before his his death and resurrection? And do you recall a time where he was just able to an account where he was just suddenly able to appear as he's doing here? Well, he wasn't in a glorified human human body before his resurrection. His, his so body he... was resurrected after his crucifixion. At his resurrection, he rose up in a glorified human body. So, no, during his ministry on the earth before his crucifixion, he, he didn't have a glorified human body. Um, there's an account in the Old Testament where someone um, was moved um, many, many miles in one direction. I can't remember the biblical account. But a person's walking along doing something and then they, they find that they're somewhere else. I, I can't remember that Bible story, do you? Um, um, sorry, I, I, I missed your, your, um, your description of it there. Um, I, I, so I was just thinking of this, this glorified body that you're um, referring to. Would it not be reasonable to conclude that a glorified body, as you, as you referred to, is, is a spirit, an angel? No, 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 because it bears the marks of crucifixion. And Jesus but, Jesus says he prophesies that he's going to rise up in the same body that he died in. Do you mind if I go to John 2 to prove that? John 2, which talks about Jesus, uh, him uh, using figurative speech about his body as a temple, isn't it? So, yeah, we can turn to that. John 2, 19 to 22. Do you, shall I read it or do you want to read it? Uh, Oh, sure, yeah, no, go on, you, you read. Yeah, that's fine, you read, yeah, that'd be good. Thank you. Um, Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then did you said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them, 
and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now he uses a figure of speech, he uses the word temple as a reference to his body. Obviously three days is a reference to the time after his crucifixion, no one's going to dispute that. So destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up in verse 19. He's simply saying that he's going to rise up the temple of his body um, three days after he died. That's confirmed in verse 21, but he was speaking of the temple of his body. Body, by the way, is soma in Greek. And Robert Gundry did a, a, a word study on soma. Every time it's applied to human beings, it always means a physical body, no exceptions. So Jesus is simply saying um, that he's going to be crucified and three days later he's going to come back to life in the same body that he died in. That's confirmed in verse 22, which says his disciples remembered this um, account and that it was about the resurrection. It says, therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he would said this to them and they believed the scripture, obviously context being about the resurrection. So Jesus is making it very clear, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. He clearly saying he's going to rise up in the same body that he died in, which he did. Because he tells the disciples in, in, in Luke 24 to handle him. He says it's I myself. And he says a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. So he appears before his disciples in Luke 24, 39, and the body of flesh and bones, fulfilling John 2. Let me, let me read it. Luke 24, 39, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. So he, he's appearing before his disciples in the same body, that he died in fulfilling John 2 19 to 21 and he says it's I myself it's not a manifestation it's not a ghost it's not a spirit look at my hands and my feet handle me and see why does he tell the disciples to handle him obviously so they can feel the marks of crucifixion that this is the same body that died on the tree and then he says for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have so Jesus is not a spirit here he's appearing before them in a body of flesh and bones surely in in this instance he was appearing as uh, the, 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 the angels we know can materialize into different forms and we've seen that we've seen that in in, in scriptures in in the past um uh, we can think of um the angels that appeared to lot there's um lot sorry joe and then the angels who um appeared to Abraham there's there's we can clearly see that angels are able to materialize into to other forms now Thomas was one who was doubting Jesus resurrection the others had seen and believed but Thomas had stated exactly what he wanted to be able to to do to be convinced and that's really exactly as Jesus did there. He, he, he was able to materialize. He was able to appear in that, that locked room because he was, he was able to as, as, as a spirit being, an angel, as an angel can do. Why does he say, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have? Luke 24, 39. Do you want to read the verse? Do you want to read that in verse 40? Tell me how your New World Translation reads. Luke 24... 24 verse 49 verse 39 and 40 oh, 39 and 40 yeah. 24 39 and 40. so okay thank you so, so see my hands and my feet that it is I myself touch me and see for a spirit does not have flesh and bones just as you see that I have and as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. So, yeah, verse 39, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones. Just looking at my, uh, 
right this one yes You're obviously looking something up, yes? Yeah, yeah, I'm just looking at the, reading some notes, of, some notes on this. That's why I, th I think it's always best to choose a topic, one topic. We both research the topic before, in advance. Oh, I, yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I had researched, but I hadn't um, refreshed my mind on this scripture. Which means, yes. Yeah, so I, I so so let, let me just let, let's refresh minds of this this conversation, and so there's a couple of points here. here you conclude you're concluding that corruption. We're not talking about corruption as in uh, a, a physical body. You were, you you were felt the corruption was. Jesus being raised, obviously, as a, as a perfect man, it was not subject to corruption. So I don't know what you're talking about. So, so, you, so, you, you were referring to me and telling me what I said or what I believed, and I, I so, didn't recognise. Yeah, so, so, so what, I was saying, what I'm saying is I was saying that where um, the Apostle Paul had said, well, where we were told that Jesus would never be raised up again in corruption, where does it say that Jesus will never be raised up again? In corruption. So we look to Acts, Acts um, 34. So where do we have it? Acts. Acts. Are you talk about Acts 13, so Acts 34? 13 34. Acts it says 13, he will 30. be raised up. It doesn't say he'll never be raised up. It says the opposite. I'll read from verse 33. God has fulfilled this for us, their children, in that he has raised up Jesus. So Jesus was raised up. Also, as it is written in the second psalm, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Very confusing psalm. Begotten was a term used of a king in Israel. Uh, our royal family when we have a new monarch we have a coronation apparently other european monarchs like the norwegian the dutch and the spanish monarchs they don't have a coronation you just become king or queen in britain we have a coronation in biblical terms what what was called a coronation is called a begetting so this is a reference to christ's resurrection and he becomes king He's begotten, he becomes king of the kingdom at his resurrection. The word begotten had a totally different meaning to our understanding of that. Verse 34, and that he raised him from the dead. So Christ is resurrected from the dead, no more to return to corruption. He has spoken thus, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Therefore, he says in another psalm, you will not allow your Holy One to see corruption. So it says twice that Jesus was raised up from the dead. And the, the standard Jewish interpretation of that, everyone's in interpretation of resurrection, which means to stand up again, is you're going to be resurrected in the same body that you died in. Just like Lazarus, when Lazarus came forth from the tomb, remember I read the passage in John 11, 38 and 39. Jesus said in uh, John 11, 39, Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. When Lazarus came forth from the tomb, it was in the same body that he died in. Resurrection means to stand up again. The standard Jewish interpretation of resurrection is you stand up again in the same body that you die in. If you said to a Jewish person 2,000 years ago, a resurrection 
is you, your physical body ceases and you come back as some spirit or ghost, that's not a resurrection. That wouldn't be the standard interpretation of the resurrection to a Jewish person 2,000 years ago. That's something that, that comes from Judge Rutherford in the 20th century, uh, not Jewish thought of 2,000 years ago. Um, I mean, how, how do you explain in Luke 24, 39, that Jesus says, Behold my hands and my feet. So he shows them his hands and his feet, surely because they bear the marks of crucifixion. Can we agree on that? I can't agree on, on, on obviously, we, we, we don't believe he was crucified, not on a, on a, on a cross as, as um, you know, other others believe. Um, but um, I, I'm, I'm not talking about cross. I'm not talking about the cross. I'm saying would, when his Jesus... Body, his body would have signs of... Yeah, his body would have signs of, of what it underwent during that, that, that death and the treatment that he had. Yes, his physical body would have... Would have right, um, so his physical body, you said, would have had the... James, you said, would have, would have, would have had have. the marks of crucifixion. In Luke twenty four thirty nine, he's appearing before them in a physical body with the marks of crucifixion. And he says, a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. So he's saying he's appearing before them in a body of flesh and bones. Let me read it. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And then a few verses later, it says that they gave him some um, fish and he, he ate some fish. To prove that he wasn't a ghost or spirit, he says... For a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. So he's appearing surely before them in a body of flesh and bones. He says it's I myself. He doesn't say this is a manifestation of me or I've, I've come as some ghost and I'm manifesting to you as some ghost or some spirit creature. He says it's I myself. Behold my hands and my feet because they bear the marks of crucifixion. Now if Jesus is in a different body, he's an absolute liar. He really is. He's a complete liar because he says, look at my hands and my feet. They bear the marks of crucifixion. And if this isn't the same body that died on the cross, then Jesus is an absolute liar of the worst kind. He's shown them his hands and his feet because it bears the marks. Of, they bear the marks of crucifixion because it's the same body. He says, it is I myself. He doesn't say this is a ghost of me or it's a manifestation of me. It's I myself. Handle me and see because he wants them to check to see the marks of crucifixion are genuine and then he says for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see i have so so you yes yeah, so you don't believe this is him appearing as you're in a materialized form in a, in a you know you're taking this as as literal literally he's in his his body so what point robert do you believe he was raised as a spirit to be in heaven with his father um, Jesus, Jesus is Jesus has two natures. He's eternally existed as spirit because he, in his deity, is the same spirit as the Father. His humanity was created just over two thousand years ago. As a man, Jesus has uh, exactly what we have. He has a human body of flesh. He also has a human soul or spirit. So, so you, so you believe in the Trinity. Yes, of course I'm a Trinitarian. Um, can I just prove that Jesus has a human spirit? Uh, in Luke 23, 46, it's easy to remember. It's Luke 23, um, and then you double that number and you get 46. And when Jesus, this is Jesus on the tree dying, and when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Well, he's, he's not speaking to the Father about his divine spirit, because that spirit is the same spirit as the Father. So he must be referring here to his human spirit. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. That's his human spirit, which separated from his physical body at, at the point of death. Now, Jesus has come back in Luke 20, 24, 39, He's risen from the dead. Resurrection means to stand up again. I mean, are you aware that everybody in church history 
disagrees with Jehovah's Witnesses, apart from a couple of weird Gnostic groups in the in the fifth or the sixth century, everyone in church history, every educated person, Trinitarian and non-Trinitarian, like Thayer, Thayer wasn't a Trinitarian, he wrote the Thayer's, Thayer's lexicon, which I've, I've got somewhere. Um, everyone believes that Jesus rose up in the same body that he died in. His resurrection was that he, his, he died and then he, he came back to life in the same body that he died in. Everyone has, has said that. Tertullian, Augustine, Aquinas, uh, Huss, Wycliffe, Martin Luther, John Calvin, John Wesley, uh, C.H. Spurgeon, all the greats of the Christian faith. Right. Jehovah's Witnesses have, have right. no education at all. You have no scholars at all. The position that you're advocating right. is advocated by people like Mr. Stephen Lett and Samuel Hurd, who have absolutely no knowledge of the biblical languages. They have no knowledge of Greek and Hebrew. There's no scholarship in the Watchtower Society. We've, we've, we, we've had... Um, we, we, we actually use plenty of research, I mean, and they come from different scholars, and they're not necessarily scholars that are within... The organization that wasn't my that wasn't my that wasn't my point your organization does not have one scholar and well we're we're, we're all bible students name one scholar in your organization a scholar well, we don't have anyone referred to as a as a scholar in in the organization so um yeah so if you're if, if looking for someone having that title yeah. as a scholar I couldn't give I couldn't give you a name myself personally because I, I yeah I have um, yeah, I'm not familiar with anyone. Who, have you who, heard who, of Mr. Fred Franz? So, have you heard Fred, of Mr. Fred, Fred Franz? Fred Franz, that ring, ring, Franz rings a bell. Yes, um, but I mean, yes, in the in the past we have there would have been scholars. Um, you know, you know, we know that. Um, with brother Russell. No, no, don't don't say don't say in the past you said in the past there would have been scholars. You're talking about, you're talking about name now. them. We name them scholar. and name their qualifications. I, don't don't make a statement I, without backing it up. You know, Although I did that earlier and I apologize because I said there was a passage in the Bible where someone was moved dozens of miles and I, I forget the passage and uh, so I, I apologize for that because I didn't give the reference. Yeah, do you know do you know Robert that your your knowledge and your the research and, and what you you you, you know that obviously is is vast. Um, you, you know you've read a lots of material. Um, I appreciate that. You know, and it goes beyond you know the the, the knowledge of, the, that I have personally. Um, you know, but it seems that what you're wanting to do is just to um, prove um, that our our teachings are not correct. Well, don't you go exactly. around trying to prove that the Trinity no. is not correct? Aren't I doing exactly well, what you yes, do? What, what, don't what don't you try and prove well, that Jehovah's Witnesses are right and the Trinity is wrong? Isn't that what that, you try and do? For, for those that have an, a, a genuine interest in wanting to, um, you know, talk to us about the, 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 the teachings in the Bible. So... Uh, you know, we're we're not out to we're not out to search for ones to pr make a point. We're not looking to to do that. Yes, our, our beliefs differ from you know one Christian denomination uh, to another. I mean, obviously, we're aware, as you're aware, there's lots of different Christian denominations and doctrines can vary. You know, we're we're not looking to 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 go out and and say this 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 is wrong. We're not. We're looking, we yes, you do. Yes, you do. What? Yes, you do. You have literature on your carts. We, we Excuse, me. Literature. Excuse me. Excuse yeah. me. You have literature on your carts, which says that other religions are pagan. I have but, seen the book. Um, what can the What can the scriptures teach us? You know, the little black one. But, the little black but, one. And that, that condemns all other religions and it condemns every government on earth. Yes, yes, and I know... Yes, and I know, that's I, been on your cart. So that's yes. what Jehovah's Witnesses are promoting beside their carts. And the Zoom meeting has, has ended. Uh, I'll see if I can log on again.